Hiya! Welcome to LSB Feasters Radio Channel, where we keep great radio from the past alive. Today, we're going to New York City and Imus in the morning. Imus was crotchety, Imus was cantankerous, but at times, Imus was really funny. Imus was a very interesting listen throughout the years. Imus in the morning started... Out in California, eventually worked its way to New York in 1971, and it ran for years and years and years, well, with a little bit of time off for good behavior back in 1977. But 1979, Imus came back to New York, did his thing, and eventually, even as the station changed from Top 40 to Sports, when it was sold, Imus stayed with the station. When WFAN let him go, he eventually worked his way over to WABC, and that's where he ended his career. And while he was there in the final several days of the show, he really opened up about himself, about his family, about the history of the show itself. And it was some fascinating and sometimes just tough listening, especially when we talk about things like his brother Fred dying and his split with Charles McCord and other things that happened through the years. So we're going to share another air check from Imus's final days on 77 WABC New York. Imus 77 WABC New York. Accumula Station News now. It's 6 o'clock. 38. Operation Stormwatch 77 WABC. 38 snowing Midtown. I'm the warm laden with those stories you'll be talking about. 77 WABC. Likely going to be a long day. Snow starts to fall at a fast clip later this morning. We'll pile up throughout the afternoon into the evening. Snow in the forecast, a lot of it. Bill Evans going to have all the details coming up in just a moment. But first, 602 quack, quack. Traffic Transit. Here's Jeff McKay. And with what Bill Evans is going to be talking about, no unnecessary driving today. We could have potentially have whiteout conditions later on in the day. And from the Wake, uh, RayCatina.com Traffic Center, I'm Jeff McKay. And this- be very careful today. This is meteorologist Bill Evans of 77 WABC, where New York comes to talk. 77 WABC. Ladies and gentlemen, Imus in the morning. Everybody, nobody wants to play rhythm guitar behind Jesus. <laughs> everybody wants to run room. Everybody wants to run. <laughs> nobody wants to play rhythm guitar behind Jesus. It seems like everybody wants to be the lead singer in a band. Guess who's here this morning? The Oak Ridge Boys? Yeah. Yes. But they're not going to sing that because it's been so long since they have. They can't remember the words <laughs> or something. <laughs> so Joe Bonzal, Richard Sturban, William Lee Golden, Dwayne Allen, all here. How are you guys? They can't hear me? Hey there. There they go. Hey there. We hear, we hear you, Don, and we're doing great. Thank hey, you, hey. sir. Thank you very much for getting up early and coming in and all that. We do that yeah. for you any time, and we have, and we would again if there was going to be an again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, well, there's... <laughs> well, uh... That's right, Joe. That's, That's right. <laughs> so, uh, and Bernie, of course, is the executive producer of the I'm the Morning program. And still is, right, Bernie? Uh, I don't think. I think I was demoted uh, about a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't. Uh, you didn't take a pay cut, did you? Put the stripes away. Well, I, I didn't take a pay cut. No. No. And so, what well, did you stop acting as a uh, in my behalf then altogether? A uh, negative. No. No way. Okay. Always acting in the I man's behalf. Okay. So when you were booking President Trump, <laughs> did you say to old blubber titties? Wait. Let me just ask you this, boss. Yeah. Do you 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 think we have President Trump the first day? That's not a that's not a fact. It's not. No. I thought oh. you were kidding around. <laughs> well, no, I thought you did. No. They were in the first week working on it. Right. No, we don't have. Uh, it's not not. Uh, well, not have on. you tried to get him for my last day? Desperately tried. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And what did they say? What did they say? We will get back to you. <laughs> He said, we, I could only do one. So would you rather me go on Imus's last show or your show the next week? And just so you know, I'm in, we said, our show the next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, which, which is the right answer? Well, this will be, because here's what I would say to him. I voted for him. I'd vote for him again. 
And uh, But there's a lot of things I don't like about that he's done. And I would say that uh, to, to him, whether he asked me or not, or he wouldn't ask me, that uh, a lot of the things you're doing are great. And, and some of the things you say are pretty good. But you've got to do yourself and the country a favor and stop acting like an asshole. It's <laughs> a good sell. So uh, that's what I want you to say to him. Hello? You got it, boss. Okay. <laughs> because I'm sure everyone will agree. Well, you know that's what I'd say. Oh, yes. No so, uh, uh, and I think, uh, well, this will be a test. Do you have the balls to say that to him? What if he doesn't feel that way, Bernie? Right. That's the problem. Well, that's, the question. that's different. That is right. the question. Right. But I know Sid feels that way. A hundred percent. And I would say it, which is probably why... He's not coming on. I think he, I hope he does. So. No. Yeah. Well, his suspense is... Uh, yeah, it's big. We reached out for Don Jr. <laughs> that idiot. That was... Uh, yeah, that was rough. We didn't know. That was pre, uh, you know. We now we have to email Aubrey O'Day first. <laughs> <laughs> 17 after the... <laughs> I want to remind you that Sunday morning at 9 o'clock Eastern Time yes, on CBS Sunday Morning with Anthony Mason, the host of the program is uh, Jane Pauling, but Anthony Mason interviews the I-Man, and it's the only interview I'm doing. Um, That's it. I'm not talking about it any other time. That's it. The I-Man morning program is ending on March 21st, and uh, that will be it for that. No, that would be today, so. Huh? It's the 29th. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> How many more of these do I have to do? Uh, if it's today, you've got five more. I mean, oh, okay, I can do that. But, but nobody's more. counting. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie and Sid, uh, Bernie and Sid take over uh, April second. Yeah. With uh, we're hoping they get Trump. Big old lover titties. Yeah. yeah. That would be an image, wouldn't it? Trump and uh, Stormy. She's got some big bosoms, doesn't she? Oh, huge. Uh, yes. They got some huge bosoms. But this other girl, this this ex Playboy model, she's um. She's actually really pretty. She's pretty smoking, yeah. She's yeah. Yeah. really pretty. Ten months with that. Jeez. Mm -mm -mm. And, and what difference is it going to make? None. Huh? Not really. It's not going to make any difference. Is, is that somebody singing? Yeah, we're actually getting the feed from the, the guys eating bagels. What do you think bagels. it might be, Don? Maybe the Oak Ridge Boys? <laughs> uh, speaking of Scotso, which I wasn't, but one of the great disc jockeys in the history of New York radio, WNEWFM, Scott Muni, has risen from, well, not really, but please welcome to the program, Scottso. Scottso here with you. I know it's been a while, Fats, but it seems like only yesterday the professor was a frequent guest on your program. But I guess it's true what they say, time sure flies when you're dead. <laughs> and now I hear the old cowboy's hanging up his spurs and moving on from his iconic radio program. I did that too, you know, except my situation was a little different in that... Uh, I stopped doing my show because I had a stroke, and unlike you, I wasn't able to broadcast while slurring my words and drooling. <laughs> but you've had one of a hell of a ride there, I man. I had a pretty good run myself. We've both racked up some memories. I had Jimmy Page pass out on me while we were on the air, and after he was revived, continued our interview with him, lying on the floor, which, as I recall, was a position you broadcast from quite frequently back in the mid-70s. Between records on WNEW, I used to play poker with the Grateful Dead in studio. Between records on WNBC, you were often mistaken for dead. John Lennon would drop by the station every once in a while when I was doing my show. You once had Chinga Chavin on as a guest. But the big question is, what is the I-Man going to do now? Become the spokesperson for creamed corn? Do voiceovers for Met Alert commercials? Serve as an anatomy cadaver for Rice Baylor medical students. <laughs> Whatever you'll do after this chapter of your life draws to a close, next Thursday morning, before you turn off that on-air light, make sure you don't throw the switch on your oxygen machine by mistake. Don't go gentle into that good night, I man. Not that you would anyway. It'll probably be after one of your mental patient coffin fits. Coming up, a tasty cut from Sop with Camel. <laughs> well... Yeah. Let me just say this. Um, 
Sometimes it's just better to leave him dead. Oh, wow. I mean, didn't want him to die in the first place, but just leave well enough alone. Yeah, it's too bad we can't say the same about you. <laughs> Sid, sir, Sid, what's going on, baby? You, you know, um, one of the things that I keep getting asked about you is, and I, I don't even know much about this myself, but if it's true, it does add to the Imus lore, which is that you were homeless, you were actually sleeping outside for an extended period of time. Yes, I was. That is true? Yeah. And then you got the job on the railroad after that? Is that how No, they, I had no. gone to um, Hollywood trying to make it, you know, and I was in an, living in an apartment down off of Sunset, and um, I can't. I, I was out of money, and I came home one day, and the place was locked. Oh my God! With all my stuff in it. <laughs> so um, I slept in abandoned cars, Railroad and cars? I used to sleep behind the dryers wow. at a um, at a laundromat there around the corner from Gold Star Studios. On, I believe, Vine Street. And I would eat. I'd find money in a, in a payphone telephone booth. And I'd always find enough to go down to the ranch market there. And uh, they had an outdoor deal with donuts and coffee and that sort of thing. And they had heaters because if it were chilly in the morning and stuff. So I'd go down there and stand under the heaters and get warm and... If I had enough change, give me a couple of donuts and some coffee. Wow. And finally, I, um, that was a couple of months. Jeez. And um, I decided to, what the hell happened? For some, oh, my mother was working at the Grand Canyon, Arizona. So I, um, I, I, I another guy and I worked at a, the guy worked at a recording studio there. I can't remember his name. He and I decided to hitchhike to the Grand Canyon, which we did. And uh, there was a, a, a uranium mine there. And um, so I had to... They hired college kids. Well, I hadn't been to college, of course. Nor did I ever go. But somehow I got a, a sweatshirt from some college back east. I can't remember which. So I put that on and applied for a job at this mine. Now, the uranium mine, they were paying, and this is back in 1960, 61, something like that. You could make $100 a day. Wow. And they hired me. And so I, um, and it wasn't long for I was making a lot of money, you know. And there was a bar there on at the Grand Canyon. And I was in that bar one night, uh, wearing that sweatshirt, and a guy who had been a professor at that college of the, of the, of the, of the sweatshirt I was wearing was in there and started asking me questions about it. <laughs> Why well, didn't I think about it? So I forget how I weaseled out of that. but So then I made so much money doing that. Well, I was in a cave-in, first of all, it's a mine. And I got out of that somehow. Then I broke both my legs. And I went to a mine in uh, Superior, Arizona, broke a copper legs. mine, in which you went down a mile underground on a cage held by a big cable. Eight of us would get on the cage. They'd lower you a mile into the earth. And uh, you had a light on your helmet and a jackhammer. And that's, so, yes, that's what about I made so much money doing that. I went back to Hollywood, made all these records and stuff, and here I am. Wow. It's like a Charles Dickens novel. That's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, my God. So where was Fred when you were homeless? He was in the paratroopers, and he was stationed in Germany. Oh, in Germany. In Wiesbaden. Wow. Oh. Jesus. And then when I was at the Grand Canyon, I was sitting in the Tusi Inn, which was a bar there, and um, I was drinking uh, Chivas Regal. And I got a call that my dad had died. Oh. Um, and I must have been, he died in 1962, so I was uh, 22. Oh, no, I was 21. And then I was on the radio when my mother died. Mm. My brother's one of his ex wives. 
She called me while I was on the air to tell me my mom's had died. Oh. Well, I, I was like, well, God, come on, man. I'm just going to get off in an hour or so. Could have waited on that one. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, that's, that's the deal. So, wow. 31 after the hour here on the I Miss the Morning Program. We did no sports, right? No. Well, we've done it all morning long. The, the NCAA really tournament is tomorrow. Sports. So, yeah. That was just that. great. That story 31 was 31 after the hour. That's true. Jeez. So, um, man. You know, a lot of stuff I've just been thinking about that I didn't think I could remember. You start thinking about it, um, then I can remember a lot of stuff. Like I was thinking about some of the guests I've had on who I really liked over these years, and I couldn't think of very many. I can think of Tim Russett and Neil Cavuto. <laughs> but then there were lots of others. So yeah, John Kerry used to be a great guest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ben Bradley was a great guest. Um, and there were just like, Doris Kearns Goodwin and Pete Hamill. Oh, oh God, I love Pete Hamill. And they were just. We're not going to have them on now because I don't want to have them on. I'm tired of that. Buddy Cianci was the best. best. Buddy was Cianci the best. was great. He was man. the best, yeah. He was great. Just. <laughs> have <no>. this. <laughs> huh? You started cursing up one morning. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here on the Ab 20 program, 20 minutes till the hour. Time for Blonde on Blonde with Deidre Ibis and Tony Powell. Woo! Good morning. I mean, first of all, on a serious note, say to Deidre Ibis, thank you, baby, for being on this program 20 years. Thank you. There have been times you've been great. <laughs> uh, but you've always, you never mailed it in. No. I'm being serious for a second. And um, I used to love when you were on MSNBC and on Fox with us, Marfty, because you were a good-looking woman. And um, so I just uh, sometimes um, I don't tell you how great I think you've been, but I know we've all made fun of you too, but you've been great. So thank you. Thank you, honey. Well, I remember all the way back to FAN, the first day I met you. Changed my life and it changed your life. And here we are. Yeah, you won the was, lottery, and what I did? Oh boy! <laughs> just, oh, man. It's a joke. It's just, what lottery uh, did I win? It's a joke. Why don't you go cough some more? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Anyway, here is uh, item number one. It was going so well. <laughs> I know. See, this is what happens with everything, <laughs> and especially in an touched. interview. Almost had me crying. It was literally. Yeah. No, she's been. No, I'm this you. is what he does. He'll hurl an insult, <laughs> and so then I, you know, I, I, how do I turn that around? He Sid, loves, he's playing with. He loves. He you. did that with me with the interview with uh, Anthony Mason. Oh, I don't mean, give it, it away! It, oh, no don't way. give it away! Not on national TV. What did I do with Anthony Mason? Come it on. became psychotic, guys. Psychotic. <laughs> oh, it's gonna boy. be great Sunday morning at night. Have fun editing that, CBS. Oh my God! That is a. Of the century, great. right there. Yes, wow. That's great. Cynthia Nixon is running against Andrew Cuomo for governor of New York State. Does she have your vote? Oh, no way. Why? What has she done? He, oh, by the way, Cuomo doesn't have my vote either, though. So. How about you, Tony? I think she has a chance. I mean, why not? If, if, if the reality show star can be what the president of the United does she States. Have? I'm sorry. We what have a experience? reality show star who's the president of the United States who never ran for anything, didn't run anything. Uh, so if he can be president, why can't she be the governor of New York? Never ran anything? I know. Exactly. Back <laughs> what that up, he, Tony. Yeah, back yeah, up. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. He ran six casinos into the ground. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> WK.